everyone, welcome back to A City Planner Plays City Builders, where we are building the city of Variant Beach. And today we are going to build a build that I am very excited about. We are going to build the Verde Beach Zoo. Um, that's one of the main reasons that in the previous episode I made this artificial lake. For a few of the zoo assets, you must have water access. And I thought that this would be a unique way to get that asset. That said, I do want to uh, acknowledge something uh, that just happened on the channel tonight that I'm really excited about. We hit 25,000 subscribers, and I really want to thank all of you for that. Um, you know, I started this back in, in August, and I never really imagined that it would, would uh, be this successful, and, and I appreciate um, all of your views and, and all of the time that you put into the channel, all of the comments that you've left, and all the support that you've given me. I, I, I'm, I'm really uh, I'm really humbled by it. So I appreciate everything and uh, I look forward to creating more great content for you. Um, that's it, all right, let's get to today's build. So I want this area to be a great zoo. So a zoo and uh, you know, natural, uh, uh, a natural resource, a natural resource, <laughs> a nature reserve. So uh, today we're going to work on the first half of that. So I want to look at this holistically. Uh, we have this entire area and if we look back, so topographically fairly flat, natural resources fairly significant in this area. So we don't want to disrupt that all that much. But we do want a definitive division between uh, our zoo and our nature preserve. So I am going to start out by creating that uh, definitive boundary. And what I think would do a great job of this is a collector, but I don't want to necessarily just plop a collector hat and draw a whole bunch of traffic in this area. I want it to be a special street, but I don't want it to overwhelm. So what I was thinking is I could use one of these uh, large avenues with grass, which would not only encourage pedestrian activity, but also act as a nice boundary between the nature preserve and the zoo. And this could act as a, as a nice thoroughfare to get transit access to this area. So what I'm gonna do is actually create this avenue through here and just use it as a division. Let's make sure that we have, all right, we have our road guidelines on. Because I want this to be a smooth turn. This is gonna be a very uh, artificial, a division in an area that is otherwise, you know, very natural uh, in the way that it hugs the land and, and interacts with the natural environment. And from here, I do want to take this road, which right now is Greenaway Street, and I want to define the edge of this area. We might as well consider what the natural, uh, natural, the nature preserve. I'm going to keep struggling with that. I'm not sure why uh, the nature preserve is going to look like. I know that people were very concerned about the way that I smoothed out this land before, and I, I'm, I'm going to be upfront with you, it's not going to be as, as crazy and curvy as it was initially, but it's still gonna have some nice curves. Um, we wanna follow the topography and respect the natural environment, and that's important. So we're going to do that. But at the same time, we're not gonna be so rigid with that that it makes it impossible to create a good environment for the park and impossible to develop. Okay, so let's take a look at what we've done. And what you see is that we have this meandering street that, that hugs the forest, that still leaves developable land outside of it. And I think that this is much better. You know, this is still quite curvy. And while it respects the forest, it doesn't necessarily respect the topography. And that is something I want to remedy right now. Okay, so I think that's a lot better. I like, uh, like the way that's looking. So let's get to the meat and potatoes of what we want to do today. We want to make the zoo. So to start out with, we need to find a good entry point. And this is a significant chunk of land. We just compare it, this zoo area to the area that we've built before. Uh, it's basically half of the city, uh, of the residential area anyway. So 
Knowing that if we take this entire area and make this a zoo, we're gonna need multiple entry points. But I think I wanna take the main entry point and uh, let's make this Verde Beach Zoo Boulevard. Really creative. Actually, there was a great suggestion. We named this after someone significant in the community in the Sterling family. So why don't we make it Sterling Zoo Boulevard? And we'll make this the Sterling Zoo. Okay, so let's move over to our zoo assets. And uh, with the zoo assets, you don't really get anything until you unlock by placing the main zoo entrance. And I wanna be thoughtful about this. I want there to be a main zoo spine that heads towards the water. So let's place that. As soon as you do that, you get the moose and reindeer enclosure, zoo side gate, souvenir shop, antelope enclosure, restrooms, birdhouse, zoo cafe, zoo plaza. So glad that we have all that unlocked. Let's make this main spine. This is going to change, but right now I just want that, that main artery down the center of the zoo. Now we need to define the zoo's boundaries. And like I mentioned, I want this to basically in, in, encapsulate this entire area with a few caveats. And I will cover those after I get the area outlined. So I see something. Greenaway is doing something weird. And I think I need to fix this. I don't uh, necessarily love the direction that it's, it's heading in. I want to better define what's happening here because that's going to define where my zoo ends. Okay, so now I can finish uh, creating my district. Okay, now that I have the main outline, I'll fill everything in. Perfect. We'll rename this. Let's make sure that I got those names spelled the same. I do not. And uh, this is a nod to the family that Sterling Square is named after. This makes sense. This is our, our first uh, uh, green cities district. So uh, why not uh, have that family be really conscientious and form the zoo as well? Okay. So now I want to come up with the basic network in the zoo, but before I do that, I need to place some side gates. So there are two, uh, one option. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I made this little edge over here because I knew that I wanted there to be an entryway into the zoo, kind of off the side of Jackson Street. Let's place that there. I think that near the, Selderly, uh, the cemetery, and uh, elder care facility, which was a mistake. <laughs> uh, I want to uh, place another zoo entryway there as well. And then at the end of uh, Fifth Street seems to be a fairly natural point to have another zoo entryway. And then finally, there's nothing over here just yet, but Blake Street would be another good entry point for the zoo. Uh, when this does develop in the future, I have a couple ideas of what will develop over here, but nothing definitive just yet. This would be another good place for that. So now I want to connect these up with one another. But I am noticing there's a little artifact from uh, some of the terraforming that we get earlier. There's this kind of weird place. The reason it looks like that is this is the actual tile. So let's smooth that out, make this a little bit more natural, and hopefully not completely break our our flow here. Looks like we're okay. No, we're not. <laughs> now I think we're gonna be okay. There's gonna be a little bit of water that does this stuff and uh, it'll clear out eventually, I hope. <laughs> not before flooding some places out. Well, I guess hopefully it goes away with time. <laughs> All right, back to roads or paths, not roads. What I'm thinking is we're going to want a path that goes down here, but I know that there are some significant topographic challenges to overcome in this area. So I want to respect the, the geography of this area and try to make the path as gentle as possible and follow the landscape. 
So I am going to turn off all of my snap twos and just kind of stay within one foot and try to not do uh, too much in the way of, of, you know, changing elevations on the main path. I think that this makes a lot of sense. If you were walking in the zoo, the last thing you want to do is have a, a 10 foot inc uh, incline or decline to get from one enclosure to the next. I'm going to try to be respectful of that here. That said, I have to get down this hill somehow. And we're going to think about that in a moment. You don't want to cut across all of these to get down. So what I'm going to do is try to cut diagonally across these and make this as gentle a decline as possible. And you see there is one, two, three, four feet right there. It's significant. Yeah, it's significant enough that I'm going to redo it. We'll do our angle snap too. Hopefully calm this down a little bit. That's much better. And I'm okay with this in the entry to the zoo. People kind of expect it and then get a chance to take a breather. So quite a bit of incline to get up, but then things get better. So we've got that. And I think for the most part, the rest of the zoo is fairly flat, at least comparatively flat. So I'm still going to use this because I still... So one, I think it makes a more unique pathway. In a place like this, it's all about the pedestrian environment. How does it feel when you're walking? It doesn't really matter how it looks at the aerial level, although I know that this is a game where that's yeah, a focus. Uh, how do things look from 10,000 feet rather than right at the ground? But I'm gonna try my best to, to think about how it would feel at the ground level. And part of this is gonna be getting as close to the coast as I can as quickly as I can. So I think that this would make for a much more interesting walk, being along this, this large pond where you'd, you'd see lots of activity, some great views of the skyline, and uh, have an opportunity to really interact with the park in a way that's unique. So I'm gonna continue to hug that same line. I don't wanna get too close to the road because I am going to fence this in eventually. And now probably the most important road, the one that crosses the water, or path. I keep saying road, sorry. Now I said I was gonna take this back and I am. One of the main reasons for that is I want this to feel like it's naturally connecting up and that this is the main path. We're gonna have other paths coming off here, no doubt. But right now the main path is the one that gets people around. So I think we have a nice spine for our, our park, our zoo. Uh, but we do need to clean things up a little bit. Okay, and that's pretty good. So now we can get to what everyone's excited about, which is actually placing buildings. So I'm gonna turn on my topographic view again for most of this because I want to choose areas that are mostly flat. So we have a few buildings. We have this zoo plaza, we have the cafe, souvenir shop, restrooms, and the enclosures that are available to us right now. So I do want there to be a grand entrance into the zoo. So I am gonna place a couple of these uh, plazas right to start out with. Uh, in addition, I think it would be good to have a souvenir shop fairly close to the entry point of the zoo. It'd also be where people would leave, along with a restroom. What might go well with that is some zoo signage. If you were coming to the zoo, the thing you'd wanna see right off the bat is where to go. I'm also going to place some seating. Give people just leaving the zoo, waiting for their family members to arrive. A little place to sit. Okay, and I love this sign that says that there are a million ways to go. We'll put a couple of those. Um, okay, so let's get back to the main assets. So I know that we're going to want a cafe. And again, I think a good spot for that might be a place with a good view. So actually, why don't we go ahead and build an area with a nice view of the water. And we'll put the cafe right there. And again, I'm going to place some seating. So we have one cafe there. I know that we're going to we have other entrances now. So let's have a souvenir shop another cafe, and another restroom. The nice thing about this is it serves both of these entry points. I think we should also place a restroom 
and a souvenir shop near this other entry point. Now, I want to look at the topography here. Yeah, we don't want to place it too far up that hill. So at least people would have the opportunity to buy some souvenirs and hit the restrooms before they leave the park. Okay, so I think we're good there. So let's get into the meat and potatoes of this. So the enclosures, again, I want to look at this topographic view. I want to make sure that we're putting these enclosures in a fairly flat location. The nice thing about all of these is they don't have to be placed along a roadway. Uh, so I'm going to place, I place the uh, moose and reindeer enclosure, one of the first things you'd see. Next we have the antelope enclosure. I think that those are fairly related. So I'm going to put those fairly close to one another. And on the other side, we have this birdhouse, not as related. Now you see that there's a lot of topo topography challenges here. So I'm not really going to put much there. If anything, I might just put some benches and a scenic uh, overlook. And then we need to make some connections to that moose enclosure. Okay, so we've got that. And really that's all we need to get going on this. So I need to make sure that this area is served by utilities. So a couple things to think about here. This is going to be a challenge. I'm going to run this and I think I'm going to place some residential in this area. And I'm going to try not to zone the really small, funky, uh, you know, one tile wide lots. Get some bigger homes in this area. Understanding this would be a pretty desirable place to live. So might as well, while I'm in this area, finish off this neighborhood and get some path connections going through here. All right, let's finish up this zoning. And this is in the zoo, so we won't zone there. All right, so the zoo needs water. So let's get water to the zoo. So most of these areas are covered. We've got lots of problems over here. Okay, now our biggest issue in a zoo this large is gonna be power, and you can see it already. We have, again, issues reaching all of these locations. So we're gonna place some what I hope are fairly temporary power lines. Hopefully we can eliminate these at some point, but for the time being, they're necessary, so we will place them. Still got that water just kind of lingering over here. <laughs> All right, well, we'll let that go. So now we're at a point where we just need the zoo to start leveling up if we want to have a five-star zoo. And one of the ways to do that is gonna be getting public transit to this area. So we have all of these ways uh, for intra-city or inner city, inner city transit to reach the city, no ways to connect to anything. So I think this is a good time while this is going to, well, first to finish this water. <laughs> Just seeing that there's an issue here, so let's deal with that. And I don't want to forget about these street names. So while I see them, let's deal with it. We also have an issue here where Hilton's becoming Blake, but Blake is actually Greenaway. And I think Greenaway is going to terminate here and we'll keep our Hilton Street Naming Connect uh, convention. Let's see. Yeah, Greenaway, I'll turn into Lincoln here. Lincoln will just kind of end. All right. Sterling Zoo. We'll leave that there. Okay. Very good. The other thing uh, that was mentioned that uh, made, made a lot of sense to me is I have River Street kind of extending. Let's have River Street end. And we'll take this new road and connect it up at Lincoln. And this new road is going to be Ocean Avenue. So Ocean Avenue will follow the coast and it's a very fitting name. Okay, now back to what I was doing. Uh, I think this is a great time to start thinking about bus routes. And what I want the bus routes to do is not just interface with the in inner city routes, but also provide local coverage. Uh, that said, we're gonna need to do a couple of things. So we have all of these areas over here that are not covered by our tram system, but I know that we're going to extend this in the future. So before I blanket these areas in, uh, in bus service, just know that I'm not gonna do that because it's not gonna make a ton of sense. Uh, I am going to take our first route, stop at the zoo entry entrances, and this will be a very purpose-based tourism line that will also come back and serve the city. Now I know that the libraries for some bizarre reason are tourist destinations. So let's stop it there. And then every couple blocks we'll have a stop. 
Now with any bus line, it's very important to have uh, a bus route going in the opposite direction as well. Okay, and I want to be thoughtful about these routes that we're creating. So, so let's do Zoo, Zoo Express Eastbound and Zoo Express Westbound. And it's a zoo. Let's make it brown. Well, oh, brown's a tough color. <laughs> brown and light brown. Okay. Uh, I also want to interface with not only the tram line, but also with the train line. So I'm going to make a route that does that as well. So I don't want this to clog up the tram route. So what I'm probably going to do is have a stop that's fairly close but not exactly on it. The unfortunate thing is, I'd love this to just be one route. I think I'd have to turn it around in some really weird location, which I might do to make this work. I don't love doing this, but I don't really have a turnaround otherwise. And I kind of just want one route making this movement. And we'll have that go to the train station. We should have more routes than that. Uh, so we're not, we don't have any routes going to Old Verde Beach. Um, at this point though, I think I kind of want to start giving a little more thought to this tram, uh, tram uh, upgrade. So what I was thinking, when you're looking, 3rd Street heads all the way through, so that might be our best tram route. There is some residential, some have higher density. Coast, hmm, actually, I was reluctant to do this. What I think I'm going to do is actually get this onto Sunset. It's a really tight turn here, and that's one of the reasons I don't love it. We also have these bus stops here now. But I see an opportunity, and the opportunity is here. What if we were to bring this around, have it turn in front, actually, no, that loop back around here, now the tram can reach our park entrance. So I do like that. Okay, so let's build another tram line. I don't want this to overlap too much with what we've done before, but I am going to have a couple of stops just to interface. Then I want to keep these stops close to intersections so that people can quickly transfer or uh, switch sides of the road or transfer if that's what they need to do. And again, leave some decent spacing here again. So that reminds me, we have a fairly unreasonable stop right here. People could walk that. We just want to make that loop. So now we have that. And I have these people stopping at the same location. I might actually want to separate that so that two vehicles could reasonably be in the queue if they had to at the same time. Okay, so now I want to change the color of that new tram line. Let's make this Sunset Express. We'll make it fire red. And this is the, the Lewis line. We'll make it green to represent the forestry district. Whoa, mess of trams as all of those new trams are kicked out for the Sunset Express. Let's speed things up a bit. Kind of looking forward to seeing things get cleaned up here. Okay, that should give us enough to start to see our traffic flow is suffering and part of that is all of these trams. Uh, a way to remedy that. So I've been thinking about this a lot. Uh, we don't have a, an overall city planning policy uh, to either encourage cycling and we have all of these cycle paths. So we're going to do that and we also don't have one for transit and i mentioned this in bluffside crossing a lot of cities are moving towards a free public transportation option realizing that the amount of money you generate from fares isn't necessarily big enough uh to to be a reason to make people dissuade people from taking transit and the savings in road maintenance is so significant uh, by getting people out of their cars that why would you discourage this? So I'm going to have the free public transport transport policy enabled throughout the entire city. And as we do that, we get 
um, some really great news. We have a new uh, couple enclosures uh, for our zoo. We've reached level two. So we have the insect, amphibian, and reptile house and the bison enclosure. So I'm very excited about that. Let's slow things down a little bit. Uh, before I place this, I just kind of want to see how we're doing on transit. So we've got our new lines, got a number of passengers looking good there. For our tram, Sunset Express has some passengers looking good. And our train, we have a lot of tourists coming in on our train, so that's good. So we're doing, we're doing all right there, and that's going to dramatically increase now that we have our new policy enabled. So looking forward to seeing that happen. This is what I'm worried about. One of the things with Vanilla is you only have these standard 30 passenger buses. You know, crush capacity on a bus, it can be double that. <laughs> so it's, it's pretty small, and crush capacity is the number of people you can crush in the in the vehicle <laughs> so maybe you know 60 is a more rational and 45 seats for a bus is is all right as well and i would expect to have articulated buses on an express route which this at least is trying to emulate and unfortunately we don't have that so as a result we just have a ton of people waiting here and they are going to start taking their cars from this location if we don't do something about it so I know I'm being distracted by this transit line, but I think it's important to take a look at this right now. So let's look and you see that's, well, a couple stops are doing that. So let's pump up the number of vehicles on this route and hope that it doesn't just destroy our traffic flow. So I'm gonna be ginger about, I'm gonna do this gingerly and have a couple more vehicles added to the route. Hopefully that's enough to, uh, to serve serve the route. And we'll, we'll check in on that later. Let's get back to our zoo. So I think it would be nice to get one more enclosure over here. We might need to level a pad for it. Let's look at the size of these. So insect, amphibian, and reptile. I think that might be nicer to get closer to the water. And it's really kind of a stunning, stunning building. So this one, let's look at the grades first. Yeah, and there are some significant grade challenges here. I'm gonna place it and then see just how bad it looks. Yeah, we are gonna have to do some things to this if we want it to go there. And I don't know if it's gonna be worth it. I think we just might have to move this one. Truthfully, maybe I'll just get it a ways out. Nope, oh, and that's backwards. <laughs> so that still has some topographic challenges, but we can work with this. This is better. Okay, so we're, we're doing a little better there. Let's get these pads connected and I'm not going to connect here well maybe I will let's see if I can I'm thinking about giving a back door into this area as well now more challenges with power again um, I wish that we could have buried utilities but we don't have that so we'll have to make do so let's see how far off we are maybe there's a building that we can place to get this to be a little closer and we can get creative we don't necessarily have to stick with just the buildings that we have from uh, uh, from the zoo uh, set so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna place a climbing area Sometimes in zoos you will see that there are children's amenities and with that I'm able to make that power connection. So it'll be a nice place that parents could take a load off, let their children burn off some steam as they're crying walking around the zoo <laughs> and, and uh, hopefully be a little happier. So let's see what we need to get to the next level. 
We've got way more entertainment than we need. We really need at this point our visitors. So let's speed that up. We will take a look at some of our issues. Still have this water here. It's gonna drive me crazy. Um, let's level this. Maybe that'll send the water there. Level, where are you gonna go? Right there. One more, okay. All right, I'll take it. <laughs> um, all right, very good. So now I'm thinking I might spend a little bit of time putting some fencing around here. I know that I've heard complaints that I use fencing a lot. It's a zoo. Without this, I think people would enter in any way possible. Uh, and I wouldn't blame them. Oh, hit a city milestone. Solar power plant, baseball park, waste transfer facility. That's a big one. Waste processing complex, inner city bus terminal, bus metro hub. So very happy with that. We could also get a loan. I don't know why we would ever do that. We could. Uh, unique buildings. Uh, we'll get to that at some point. <laughs> so, all right, let's, I'm going to take a bit of time and I'm going to fence in this entire park area. Uh, bear with me and I apologize. <laughs> Okay, so now we've defined our zoo with fences. And the nice thing about that is it also removes the zoning in those areas. And you might have seen I went a little rogue in a couple of areas, leaving space for some buildings. And I thought it might be nice to just incorporate some additional uh, housing nearby the zoo, understanding that this would likely be very desirable land. In addition, if you had some offices in this area, they would have some pretty great views over the fence of the water. So uh, we're kind of building this little office complex that we have over here. So I think it works well. All right, let's see where we're at with the zoo. We're almost at our next level. So I think, I might just wait a second. Now this is one reason why I really wish that there were parking lot assets in the game. You see that there are all these people in the parking lot. The parking lot's full. Um, we're gonna start seeing people parking on the street here. We do have these nice big uh, no stop zones for the buses, but we're we're packed. We are packed. Um, let's see where our other entrances are looking. Lots of cars around there as well. I mean, it's in, in one sense, it's good because people are coming to our, our zoo. In another, not so good. All right. And now we have reached level three. So we have the sea life enclosure, flamingo enclosure, and elephant enclosure. So I think this is exciting. Time to continue work on our zoo. And now that I think about it, I never placed the reptile enclosure. All right, well, we'll do that now. So I think this could really be something that the zoo is known for. So I'm gonna place this in a fairly prominent location. You walk in and you get this really prominent uh, uh, insect, amphibian, and reptile house. And it's, it's really close to everything. You got a nice view of the water. Good, I like it. Next. So we have our flamingo enclosure, but I'm really excited about the sea life enclosure. I'm also very nervous about it. <laughs> I mean, I built this whole thing in anticipation of this in the future, and I could screw it all up right here. <laughs> Hopefully that's not the case. All right, so I want this to be fairly centered. I want it to be the, the centerpiece of 
this area, I'm going to do some, some bad things to the power. So I think I want to, to line this up as best I can with the center. So I'm going to pause this momentarily. Let's clean up our power lines a little bit. Again, everything here is temporary in terms of power lines. Eventually, we will eliminate all of them, if at all possible. I don't like these. <laughs> I think they're terrible. Uh, all right, so we are good there. Now, one of the things I don't love about this is there's really no way to, to get around here to get to the restroom. So I think we might need another restroom, and that presents an opportunity again to connect power. So let's grab a restroom facility we also do not have a souvenir shop over here and i understand that this will not necessarily be well utilized to start out with but it might be at some point perfect all right we actually don't even have water over here. Interesting, so the main gates don't need water, or the side gates don't need water. It was never chirping about that. Got water there. We wanna loop this though. We don't wanna have all these, these stubs, so we are gonna do that now. Okay, so that's looped. Great location for that. What else do we have? We have our flamingo and our elephants. So, I think it might be nice, and this is gonna be another showcase, but I wanna spread things out a little bit, give people a reason to walk over here, and that might be the elephant enclosure. I actually might, looking at the design of this, let's rotate this. We basically have two cul-de-sacs, and we can use those as connection points. I'm gonna line these up. So if you're coming in out this gate, the first thing you see is this elephant enclosure. I also want, let's see, is it possible? No, this, this is good enough. You have to walk around the, the, the enclosure. To, oh, this is, whoops, flamingos. All right, well, flamingos are exciting too. It's the official bird of Madison, Wisconsin. <laughs> uh, elephants, we want that over here too. But I think I am going to back that off the path, give it some space. Just did some things to our power, but it no longer matters because we are connected through this entire area. And if we find another building to place here, we can eliminate our last power line. But let's get this connected up to a road first or a path, not a road. Ooh, actually, I want to fix these grades first. That's brutal. I probably should have looked at that for this, but I didn't. Now I'm going to suffer the consequences of that decision. Thankfully, the suffering is not too bad, and it's fairly simple to fix the grades in this particular location. Notice that there's this remnant power line. Hopefully, not necessary. Okay. So let's get a path to this elephant enclosure. Well, that's very nice. We need water to come there as well. We have some things happening with the water here that I don't love. Uh, unfortunately, the water actually isn't connected to the external network. So maybe it's time to fix that. The water internal to the park, that is. We have this temporary line there. Now here's where water lines become an issue. In reality, if this were to be left here, which there's a good chance it would be, you end up in a situation where if any work is done to this line, you are going to need to dig up that main fence. And that's just not gonna happen. Um, or I guess it might, but it's just not, not desirable. Now it's still going through this main gate, but it's going through the pavement area. So presumably they could dig it up there are multiple gates. You can close one if you have to. Okay. So just one more thing here, and we are done worrying about power in this entire park. So why not a cafe? We only have one at this point, which isn't good enough. 
actually two. And this would be a fairly good location for it. But let's look at our power. Centrally located fixes our connection issues. And again, I want to give this cafe some seating. Let's make it a good people watching spot. All right, that won't be perfect, but I will get it as good as I can. This is one of the things that I miss about some of the mods like Move It, is I would move this. Okay, and that took far longer than I ever imagined it would. Wow, and it still doesn't even look that good. I will uh, hide that with picnic tables. <laughs> Unfortunate, and it's just graphical glitching and crazy stuff. Good thing is I'm gonna view it from here and it looks wonderful to me. I love that. So let's see where we are at with our zoo. We are right there, just like the timing couldn't be better. We're almost a four-star zoo, so let's just hang out a second. Let's think, see how things are going. All right, giraffes and monkeys. So we're getting some of the some of the, the exhibits that people are really excited about. That water is back. Dang it! I just I can't escape it. Okay, so let's see the size of these. So we know that we have these last two, the rhinos and the lions, and those are going to be big draws too. So again, topography. I don't want to cut off this area back here. I'm a little nervous that I'm heading down that path. And I want things to feel spread out a bit. We have room to stand alone. So I think maybe it's time to finally integrate this portion of the park. So we have monkeys and giraffes. I feel like giraffes are a draw too. They're just so unique in, you know, really any part of the world to see. So I'm gonna place these over here. But first, let's think about this a little bit. So we've got, you know, we've got two big exhibits. I think I'll place those back here. I'll leave this to stand alone, and I'll try to put two along here. I'm gonna need to do some terraforming. I just, I have to. Okay, so now we have our giraffes and for our monkeys. What I think I might do to eliminate this last power line altogether, place this here and try to figure it out. <laughs> oh, that's not gonna work. Okay, I think I can work with this. So, let's do a little bit of terraforming to get this fixed. People don't need to worry about the back end of it necessarily. So we can leave a cliff there. Okay. It's got our monkey palace. I like that. Maybe one little spot that I could terraform. Nope, make it worse. Make it worse. Okay. Sometimes you just gotta know when to accept things. This is one of those things I just have to accept. Okay, and... Oh, that water! It's in here. Okay, well, maybe it's not. Maybe I just caught it at the right time. No, it's, it's there. Who knew that was gonna be a thing? All episode. <laughs> Guess I should have guessed. making me wonder if I get the pumping service will they actually do the trick over here well only one way to find out we don't have a pumping service yet we do have disasters on whoa 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 all right I whoa <laughs> I did not know that this was happening it's just kind of 
happening in the background that everything in the city is burning down. So I think I might understanding at this point how bad things are going. Try to work a fire department into this area. Okay. Um, hmm. We've got a fire department right there. This isn't even a, an area that's bad. Wow. Well, that's unfortunate. Well, at least we have this water right here. All right, back to our pumping service. So I think I'm gonna place this in our public works campus. Okay, so let's see. Vehicles in use, none. Huh. Well, we're gonna need it anyway at some point. So I'll leave it here. It's just unfortunate that uh, our zoo enclosure or our uh, giraffe enclosure is gonna have issues. I wonder if I can terraform this to fix it at all. Hmm. Oh, there's the water, I see it. Let's see if that remedies things. Seems like it may have. There was just a little bit of water spilling over. Every now and then, causing major issues. All right, so we uh, built that building for no apparent reason just a moment ago. All right, well, sometimes you do things you don't necessarily need to do. <laughs> I do wanna loop the water over here. Redundancy is always good, especially with disasters, knowing that we could have a significant disaster at any point that could decommission some of our water lines. So let's be thoughtful about that and make sure that we're covered. I do think understanding that there's nothing underneath here, I'm gonna get a water line to connect through the park. We could dig up this land if we had to. Okay, so we're good there and we're almost at a level five park. We do need a number of visitors though. So let's go back to our bus routes. We never really finished that. We just kind of moved on from it. So we've got a lot happening here and a lot of missed opportunities. So one of the things I want to take a look at is the location of our schools. So ideally, we'd have all of these schools connected up to public transportation. So, I just want to keep this in mind as I'm drawing some routes. You see that some are already covered, but down here we're definitely not covered. So I am going to start a route down here. Hmm, let's look. Where was that school again? Okay, right there. So let's start a route right in front of the school. And I want to get this to the high school, I think. So, stop by the park, stop by the high school, and then I want to, with all of these, have a place to interface with a higher quality form of transportation. And this path is that location. And then I'm going to loop back around. Now I think again with this route, I'm going to try to interface it with higher capacity transportation option. And I really want this to stick. I don't want this to be a route that is too, I mean, uh, going back and forth. This is certainly purpose built and it's just to provide a connection from these different routes through this area. And truthfully, maybe this would be a little better going down the center here. Sims are willing to walk, but I think that they're going to choose between one of the two of these. Next, Lewis Shores is a ways away. Primo Verde, I think, needs transit as much. Maybe we'll have a route that hugs the coast to get people where they need to go. And again, provide an interfacing option with the existing transit routes that we have. Try to be, I'm trying to be mindful of where there are actually destinations while still 
spacing the stops appropriately. I think I'm gonna bring this right down the center of the neighborhood and use that as my method of looping. And then here, I again want to find those opportunities, transfer between routes. So I'm giving those connections in close proximity. Now we have decent coverage of most of our residential areas. We could certainly provide other options for these commercial areas. There's still a hike between this transfer, but it's possible. Um, so I think we're okay. Coverage mostly all right for the time being. Could always be better, but I don't want too many buses out there doing things. Right now, our, our, our buses are carrying a lot of traffic. So this route right here, we make this one green. Let's make this one under shores. And this one, West River Street, appropriately colored blue already. Perfect. Love it. Now the zoo. So close. About a thousand people away. So let's again think a little bit more about the zoning along the zoo. And I think I'm going to add some trees back here to buffer these new homes from the zoo. Get a sense of privacy. Because I don't know that the zoo is the reason why these are, are you know, a good place to live. I think the zoo is nice. But the real reason why people would want to live here is the close proximity to all the stuff, high quality transit. They probably want to buffer from the zoo and would think that that's a drawback in their neighborhood uh, for them. So now there'll be this nice row of uh, residential properties with big yards that back the fence to the zoo where there'll be lots of people walking, looking into those backyards if there weren't a significant landscape buffer in that area. So uh, I think this, this certainly helps. Okay, so we're almost there. We're almost there, another 400 visitors. Um, so there are some things we might want to think about. Let's take, take a look at how all of our systems are operating. Healthcare, pretty good. I think we could use a clinic over in Lewis Shores though. We have this extra land over here. We just kind of have trees in, so I think I'm gonna put it there. And then hopefully, that will be good enough for this, these folks over here. Uh, interestingly, even though we have this elder care over in this area, there's no clinic. Could be another important location for that. So I might extend this road a bit and provide a clinic. Not the best location at the end of the road, but we are retrofitting it in. And if we're not going to be demolishing a home, it's probably the best we get, and it provides the coverage we need. So we'll deal with it. So I'm still a little, oh, okay, there we go. Our level five buildings, we've reached level five. Uh, but before we do that, I'm a little nervous about this park. And I think I do, do want to put one more fire watchtower in this area so we don't run into any problems with fires. Hopefully that remedies it. I know that we still have a very high fire hazard. In this area, the best we could probably do would be to take a house for a firehouse. I think we're going to do that because we just... We don't want any more fire issues. Okay, so let's think about our last couple of buildings. So we've done it. We've got the rhino enclosure and the lion enclosure. So let's make these the show pieces of this area. 
It's also a trinity. Okay, they are connected by power. I got nervous there for a second. All right, we're good there. We just need to make these connections. We should be good. I don't love the way that this is located on there, so I might just modify it a bit. Now I want to play with the terraforming. Again, on the back end, if we have a little bit of grade, that's no problem. I just don't want it up front. Then our water. All right. So there we go. We have built a five-star park. Five-star zoo. Uh, it is losing money because it's so great. <laughs> and if we wanted to improve that, we could certainly increase the ticket prices. I'm of the mindset that, you know, public amenities don't necessarily need to make money as long as the city as a whole is making money. I do want to think about some of these policies. Um, so let's see, animal ethics. That's a good one just uh, from an animal rights standpoint. Advertisement, let's get more visitors for sure. Main gate, the main attraction in the city. I think for the time being it is, so let's do that for now, it might change. Uh, celebrate, yeah, let's not celebrate in the zoo and scare all the animals. Uh, night tours, let's do that. More, uh, more people at night, even more fun. Well maintained. Yeah, let's do that again. Recycled garbage and animal ethics. Let's do it. And no fireworks. We don't want fireworks in the zoo. That's a bad spot for it. This is going to make the zoo. Look at that. Now we're profitable. We can even lower the ticket prices a little bit. Okay, 25 bucks. A bunch of policies. We're making money at the zoo. All right, I'm very, very, very happy with how this build turned out, but I'm wondering what you're thinking. Uh, so please drop a note down in the comments uh, and let me know if you like this build or if there's anything you think I should change. Um, so I think we're gonna end it here. If you like this video, please consider liking it. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. And if you wanna be notified when I release new videos, please hit that notification bell. Uh, this is the last episode of Verde Beach for the while. We are going to switch back over to Bluffside Crossing where the difference will be stark. We're going to have winter time. No more palm trees. No more bright blue skies. It's time for uh, a big change. So uh, thank you so much for joining me. Um, and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.